I'm Dr. Julie Tumoon. It's been a little while since I jumped in here. I was gone on vacation last week and just never got around to making a video, so it never happened. So I hope you're all doing really well. And I've been thinking about something this week I really wanted to take a chance to jump in here and talk about, and that is whether a diagnosis really matters. Now, I've been in medicine a long time, and certainly we're taught to diagnose, and we're taught to look for the parameters of various conditions or diseases or problems that people are experiencing. But the longer I'm in healing, the more I get the feeling that for many people, a diagnosis slows them down. Now, let me explain. So let's take hormonal problems, fatigue and pain, of which very often people present with one or all of the following, you know, especially Hashimoto's, chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia, and any number, there could be many other conditions in there, you know, chronic migraines and all kinds of other things, early onset diabetes or pre-diabetes. But regardless, I find that some things, especially things like Hashimoto's, fibro and chronic fatigue syndrome, all carry with them a personality. And the thing is, is that if someone suggests that you have those conditions, we're all intelligent, so of course we go start researching. And the internet is full of a whole lot of information. Some of it's very good, and some of it is god awful. But there's also a lot of fear out there, because it is a forum where people get to present their worst case scenarios, and many, many, many people do. Now, I'm not saying that everything out there is misleading, but here's what I am saying. Things like Hashimoto's kind of have this moniker about them. You'll never heal it. You can just hope to control it. Something I don't personally believe in. I do believe that that, like many other health conditions, is totally solvable. I don't ever use the word cure. It has a weird connotation to it. But I do believe you can solve the problem. Curing it is all about the disease, right? And what are diseases? They're just conglomerations of symptoms. That's all it is. It's a group of symptoms that they, a bunch of people agreed, oh, we're going to call that this because of, usually it's a doctor that discovered it, named it, etc. The fact is, is if we go back to our true understanding, they really are groups of symptoms and sometimes lab results. And if we rely on that and what the conventional medical model says about it, and sometimes even the naturopathic model, then we get to the impression that like, oh shoot, I'm saddled with this forever. Now, if we look from the perspective of many other medicine traditions, we discover that any condition can have a multitude of reasons why it presents in an individual. It's not all the same. It's only the Western medicine model that says, oh, it's all the same. All the people with this condition have these parameters and that's it. We just treat according to, you know, X, Y, and Z. But Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, they would all say, well, I could see someone with the same symptoms as Hashimoto's, for example, and they could have the potential of a multitude of different patterns. And so if I treat according to a one size fits all, you know, process, I'm going to hit the target 25% of the time, maybe. And the rest of the time, the results are going to be lacking. And this is what I've seen, because I've seen so many people come through my practice and so many people in my online program that have things like Hashimoto's and chronic fatigue, and there's a multitude of reasons why they have it. I think a diagnosis tends to hold people back, because when I speak to these people, they, you know, it's always with that lamenting, like, oh, if it just weren't for this Hashimoto's, if it weren't for this chronic fatigue, I would be living my life. And they've often been doing a lot of the things that docs tend to recommend. And sadly, even in the world of natural medicine, I'm seeing a lot of sort of the one size fits all model applied over and over and over. Like, oh, you have chronic fatigue. We need to boost your adrenals. We need to give you some B vitamins. We need to put you on an anti-inflammatory diet. Those are all reasonable, but they're not getting to the root. And they're certainly not specific to that person. And a lot of times they make temporary improvement, but not totality. Now, there are, like I said, the personalities that go with all of these conditions. And what I find is that our beliefs, because they're real things, they tend to set in motion a whole cascade of events. And sometimes you can't unwind that, that those beliefs can stand in the way of healing more than physical issues can. 
your beliefs are real tangible things. Think of them as molecules. Every time you have a staunch belief set up in your system, you've generated new molecules. And now those molecules are circulating through, their bo through your body and they're creating new conditions, new symptoms, new outcomes. And if you don't know how to change those beliefs in the midst of healing the physicality, you are going to stay stuck. And most healing is focused on, let me change your physicality. And they don't even know where they're looking because they're using a one size fits all approach, but they're not even touching on the belief side of it. So I want to pose the question to you. What if a diagnosis that you have is actually a moot point? What if it doesn't matter? What if the diagnosis is actually more of a distraction? Because now you have attached a label to yourself and all of the things that come with that label are attached as well. And as the result of that, you have set up limiting beliefs about what's possible as a result of having that condition. I see this also with things like PCOS. I see women say, well, I'll never be able to lose the weight because I have PCOS. I'll never have fertility. I'll always have hormonal problems. You hear those words? Never. Always. I see it all the time. Let me tell you a little story about myself. I was diagnosed with PCOS when I was maybe 14, 15. It was around the same time I was anorexic. Guys, I've had three kids. I never had any fertility problems. I don't believe I ever had PCOS. Now, I believe I fit all the parameters of, of diagnosis, but I never, I never attached the meaning and I went on to change my diet and live a healthy lifestyle. And as a result, I had three beautiful, healthy kids. It's just a great example of the fact that we can get stuck there or we can say, hmm, maybe that doesn't matter. I don't have to identify myself with those parameters. And as a result, we have a wide open field of potential possibility for changing things. I have seen tons of women in my practice with those same diagnoses who now no longer have the problems. Were they cured? I don't think they, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The pattern that created it for them got changed. I don't care about the diagnosis. And what I would encourage you to do is maybe to stop looking for a hard medical diagnosis because it is very likely going to hold you back from your healing. Start looking for someone to identify the patterns in your body, the patterns that generate the symptoms, and start to understand why your body's doing that. The questions that should be being asked are, why is your body generating those symptoms? What's creating it? Where is the stress point? Which organ systems are involved? How are your cells responding? Where's your nervous system in that? Where's your stress response? How keyed up is your nervous system? How weak is it? Where's the inflammation? Why are you responding that way? Those are the things that people should be asking. And if they're not, you're probably talking to the wrong people. And if they're not talking about what's happening in your cells, you're probably talking to the wrong people. Because it is inherently essential that we ignore the diagnoses for the most part. Now, mind you, this is not medical advice. I'm not telling you to go home today, stop taking all your meds and ignore the diagnoses. Not at all. Because in my practice, the way that I operate, I don't ignore the symptoms. See, those are symptoms, and often they've given you medications, and mind you, stopping medication outright can often cause its own hazards. I don't ignore those things. I dive deeper than them. And I set in motion a plan that is more sophisticated in dealing with the actual problem than the surface one that ju thus generated the diagnosis. So what if we moved past that point? Now, I wish medicine was, was on board with that process, and I know practitioners who are, and they're also getting amazing results. But I know that a lot of medicine, and I hate to say this, but especially functional medicine, is chasing down values on labs and then throwing supplements at it and calling it good. And then they're chasing down more values on labs and throwing more supplements at it. And they love the diagnosis because all their protocols are built around the diagnosis. And it's inefficient medicine and it costs us huge amounts of money and it wastes our time. So if you want the real freedom, if you want the vitality, if you want like the, the goddess essence inside of you to bubble up and move forward, then I encourage you to start to think outside that box. I encourage you to understand that the belief that you can't move past a certain diagnosis is actually just a belief and beliefs are changeable. And I encourage you to think about stepping into your power and looking for a solution that lets you not have to have that as your forever moniker.
that you don't have to wear the badge anymore. Oh, I have this and I have that. Because it is a limiting prospect. So hopefully this incites some thought. Definitely comment below if you're having questions or to your insights because the reality is, especially in women over 40, we don't have time to waste messing around with trying this, trying that, and letting a diagnosis define who we are. And granted, all of those diagnoses produce horrific symptoms in some people and really alter our lives. So how much of our life are we going to waste on ineffective protocols? And how much of our life are we going to recapture so that we can live in our beautiful, big, vibrant self? All right, guys. Listen, I wish you many blessings. Reach out if you want to talk more about this or anything else. And I hope you have a beautiful Friday. Take care.